because see, see how easy all you have to do is just miss the 50 worst trading days and you double your returns <laughs> yes yeah and that's that is substantial uh what well, the One of the favorite chart. pieces I have in my in my desk is uh, is is a piece from San Francisco Chronicle from I think it's from 1987 and it's on one side of it is the, the crash and and everything and the next side and the other side is the next day's paper front page which is jubilee everybody you know everybody it markets up six percent or something like this today and it's 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 always broken or perfect and and we just don't know what the next day is going to oh hold. man so, that that. Re- On that note, let's talk uh, WeWork. Chris, you want to talk about WeWork a little bit? Uh, I think we should probably pass on WeWork. Obviously, it's in a bad it's in a bad spot, and you know, it, it's we we can probably have one on one conversations about WeWork. It's probably probably the best thing to do this round. Okay. We 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 can talk about market timing though. You want to talk about market timing? Market timing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, here here's the thing. So. The example was really just single stock risk. Um, the, sure, the, the, one thing, the, the one thing is, that you have with a diversified portfolio is many, many opportunities. Um, you know, obviously, you're hoping to, to earn a return on, you know, if you have a stock portfolio and there's, there's 200 positions, you're hoping that all of them do well. But if one of them doesn't do well, that's one 200th of your portfolio. And the return is the average of all those returns over, you know, in a, in a portfolio. Um, with any single stock, you can, you know, you can do really well. I mean, there are examples. I mean, everyone knows them. You heard of the, the the secretary who started at Microsoft and, you know, got shares at the, on the ground floor and is, you know, multi, multi millionaire. I mean, things like that do happen. But also a single stock is the risk of complete failure. And it does happen. We don't hear about it a lot, but, you know, Enron and, and other countries, it does happen. And when you, when we talk about de- declines, in portfolio value, it's typically a temporary decline. So portfolio values are down, but nothing is bankrupt, right? You've the, the price per share is down on whether it's you know it's stocks or or the valuation of a bond, but the bond's going to come due. The price the the company's still running, can still earn money. Um, when you're talking about an individual company, once they once they hit rock bottom, there's there's no hope of recovery. So it's just a completely different um, it's a completely different investment strategy. Single stocks. Again, this is not something we do, but um, you know, everyone hears of the of the great investment in some company that that went to the moon. You just don't hear of the investment that you know when something was worth forty billion dollars, and the next you know, in, in a couple of years later, it's worth you know twenty five million. It's just a it, it's a big difference. It's worth repeating too. Diversification is getting away from concentration in e- either certain sectors, certain countries, and and certainly you know not having it all in one stock. But like Kyle was talking about earlier, if you if you strip out just a few of those companies in the S and P five hundred, that you know again people try sometimes to concentrate their their holdings in just the winners, um, you know you might be down to four or five or six stocks, and if that part of the market then declines, you know Jason's number of, <clears throat> of minus twenty or thirty is probably mild. You know you go you don't have to go back very far to find sectors that are down 50 60 70 percent um 12 when months they, when they just file, fall out of favor it's just right. a matter of oh well we'll go somewhere else for a while there's a sector rotation and then you go well what happened to semis i i thought semis were the hottest thing and now you know nobody wants to hold them oh they're back you know it's, you know 12 months later so uh, that's that's the rough part about concentration whether it's single stock or single sector or single country or whatever it happens to be well, Chris, I think uh, we've hinted on the past, right? And perfect, like short-term examples, clients look at year-to-date numbers. And I know, I think it was Jason and I on one of the, the monthly market matters that we discussed that everybody's like, well, what's year-to-date? Uh, if it's January 10th, it's 10 trading days. If it's now, it's nine, 10 months, 11 months worth of the year. Year-to-date is just a number in time. But if you expand things to a one-year number, or three year number or five year, you get more a reasonable sample size. And for example, we look at Amazon, right? So up 50% at one point this year, down 40% last year, everybody six months in, why don't we own more Amazon? Why don't we own Nvidia? Well, nobody wanted to own Amazon last year before they, when they were laying everybody off and down 40%. So if you expand those numbers, sometimes outside of the six month calendar year we're in and go to a one year number, things average out. And just to pull those two ideas together, you know, one of the things that we've seen, if you look at stock and bond returns back to 1950, is that, you know, to your point, over any given year, you could be up a lot or you could be down a lot. 
right? And it's really anybody's best guess. But as you begin to look at things over a five-year rolling period or a 10-year rolling period or a 20-year rolling period, we actually have found that since 1950, there is not a single five-year rolling period where a 50-50 portfolio of stocks and bonds lost you money. Right. So diversification smooths out the ride. It improves your chances of success. And if you can keep the ride more comfortable, right, then you keep people invested. And if you can keep people invested, then they subsequently improve their chances of, of accomplishing their long term financial goals. And so it's that combination of diversification and time horizon that really leads to, to long term investment success. And we it's say really that all the time. The goal is to try to keep people in because a lot of times it's it's that uncomfortableness is when we make our bad decisions. And and we've said it a million times. You got to time it twice, right? On the way out and the way back in. So if we can keep clients in knowing that over time, it typically works out in their favor. Uh, that's better for them in the long run, too. For sure. So top questions from clients. We normally, we normally do this just to, uh, again, if somebody's got a question, there's probably 10 or 20 other people that have the same question, just haven't answered it. You guys got anything recently? Well, you hinted on the war stuff. I know that's usually been front and center a number of times. Um, I think Chris had one, didn't you? Uh, relative to war? I don't think no, so. No, one a different question. Uh, well, I, I was going to speak a little bit on market timing. Um, okay, go for it. There was one... Um, chart that I saw this this last week, uh, if we can pull that that Vanguard chart up uh, regarding best and worst days. So we, we get this sort of inquiry all the time. Well, if, you know, cer certain things happen, let's go back to the beginning of October. Uh, you know, things things are going to get really questionable in the Middle East. Maybe we should just sit out for a while. And so, you know, you have the sort of a deep conversation with clients about, you know, it's it's important to stay in. And well, you know, if I if I if I just I feel I'll feel better if I'm out for a, a little bit. And so what this um, what this piece from Vanguard sort of illustrates, going back to 1988, is if you just would have stayed invested and missed no days, uh, is that is that chart up right now? I can't see. Yes, it. yeah, it is. Okay, good. Um, so if you, if you stayed in, uh, your your average return over that period of time, and this is using their, I think it's the Vanguard All Stock Index, but let's let's call it the S and P 500 for our purposes. Um, you're up about ten and a half percent. You start missing just the best days and you know, just a few of them your average annual return goes way, way down. Um, now, you, Jason and I can probably mix this up a little bit, but Jason would uh, argue you could also miss the best, uh, or excuse me, the, the, <laughs> the, worst the, trading worst, days. the worst trading days, and you could really enhance your return. The problem is that the, the crystal ball is consistently broken in terms of uh, what's coming next. Because see, see how easy all you have to do is just miss the fifty worst trading days, and you double your returns. <laughs> yes, yeah, and that's that is substantial. Uh, well, one of the, one the, of the favorite pieces I have in my in my desk is uh, is is a piece from San Francisco Chronicle from I think it's from nineteen eighty seven, and it's it, on one side of it is the, the crash and and everything, and the next side and the other side is the next day's paper front page, which is jubilee everybody you know everybody it markets up six percent or something like this today and it's 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 always broken or perfect and and we just don't know what the next day is going to hold oh, man. that that reminds me that's so tough you know it's almost cringeworthy when you're watching like cnbc and i know the clients feel this too i feel that there's only two words they ever describe a stock or even the market Plunging. there's only two plunge well plunge or crater crater <laughs> is the word that they love um i remember i was i think i was just you know getting ready and the tv's on in the background and i'm trying to get into work and i can hear on the news the market is cratering i'm like oh my gosh i go turn around i go look at the tv and and the dow is down like like 60 you know um down less than less than what a fraction of a half a percent but but according to that journalist that was on the market was cratering or the other one that they love to use on a day that the market is green that it's rocketing it's just rocketing up it's up one percent <laughs> today and then the next day it's cratering it's like it, you know i i get it why the clients get worried and they get because this is what they see yeah it makes and it just tough. one 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 thing to add to that, if you pull that Vanguard chart back up, if you look at the the bottom um, on the daily return since 2020, you know the other thing that I would I would highlight is that the good days and the bad days tend to cluster together, right? So Jason, to your point, you know the market craters one day and then it rockets the next day. Well, like none of us are good enough at this to be in on day one and out on day two, and so that just further kind of supports the idea of getting invested and staying invested because the idea that you're only going to hit the good ones and miss the bad ones. I mean, if you could do that, then you should go start a hedge fund in my view. Yeah. Well, and then you took, think about it this way. How many times have you had a client call in a week where the market's been up and they say, why is the market up today? <laughs> 
I don't know. Nothing came out new. The market just went up today. It, it oh, I moves. don't get those calls. <laughs> oh, you don't? I've had no one call and ask me why they're making money. <laughs> no, not why am I making, but what's driving no. the market? Markets yeah. can react on on the smallest things. It can be just technicals and momentum and not even necessarily news, you know? So I think that's part of it. It's There's no way to time something that's unpredictable with you know certainty like that. So. Then, uh, go ahead, Ed. I was going to say, in case okay. anybody missed it, David is a global market strategist. Again, he's he's removed from what we're doing and watching again doing this stuff daily. And he's saying, stay invested. Um, the, our the clients don't know, but they're always looking for the person uh, who can you know who can time the market, who has the crystal ball. And those people just don't exist. I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with moving your money around to different segments of the market, but thinking that you know what's going to happen tomorrow or this week or next week. I mean. If you missed it earlier, he said that, hey, we thought bonds were going to be a great place to be 12 months ago. Again, experts are they, they have a good read. They have, they have a lot of data and they're they're very smart, but it doesn't mean you know exactly what's going to happen. So replicating that, too, replicating that, too. You know, let's say you time something and you did and you got it right. You did it right. How do you replicate that? Did you read read a certain article? Did you just have a, the right breakfast? Did you see something on Twitter? Did you Gut. see the right news article? How do you replicate the fact that you timed it correctly? Gut feeling. It all goes on gut. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think that goes back to the day trading thing. That that's where the, the day trading thing, which you've, you've ever talked to anybody who's day traded or heard about day traders, it's basically the same story every time. They mistake luck for skill. You know, you, you do something and it works and you do it again and it works and you think you're really good at it. And the truth is it's really a bunch of market forces that you don't really even understand. And you continue to increase your bets, continue to increase your bets until one day it only takes one, you know, one opportunity for it to go sideways and they're wiped out. And it's literally the story of almost every day trader that they started small, did well, built up, built up, built up. Next thing you know, they're in options because you need Back leverage, to work. right? Yeah, exactly. And you're out of money. You're you're wiped out. So.